everybody, I am Tanaya from Tanaya and Ahmad. If you're new to this channel, please hit that like and subscribe button. And also hit that bell to get notified every time a new video is out from us. So, today is this me, obviously. And I'm finishing up on the Hampton video. And I don't want to drag it out, so I'm just going to give it to you as it is and finish up. So today I'm going to be talking about the dorms and also teachers and i believe that's about it but i'm not gonna go into too much details about the teachers and all that stuff just because you know lawsuit and trying to get involved with that and i just want to wrap it up so i don't keep rambling about the same thing you know but it's like kind of like a story time i guess you could say but i just want to get it out the way because i don't know there was a lot going on so it is what it is so i'm gonna put my phone on mute also, I still have the notebook over here, so I can refer back to my notes. And boop, my 88 page letter to Hampton, yeah, yep, what pictures. <laughs> all right, so all of this happened right after the hurricane. So September, September 26th is where I took the pictures, but all this happened uh, September 12th to the 17th. So that following week when we got back to school, this is everything that happened from me moving four dorms and all that. So yes, guys, so let's go through this. Two dorms, four roommates, four rooms in one semester. It's a lot, y'all, it's a lot. So through this letter, I didn't get a chance to write down all the notes through this 88 page letter. But uh, yeah, the lady had me bent with that one. So I had to put her in check as far as that because she's basically saying that I didn't move four times. Uh, nothing was documented and all that stuff. But basically, it's not my fault if nothing was documented. That should have been on them to get that all in the system and all that stuff. But, but I documented everything. And I will put the videos of me going into each dorm and all that up in here and all the pictures. And if I leave out anything, you'll probably see it on the slide and just pause and watch it. Anyways, dorms. Uh, the first dorm I lived in was Kelsey Hall. And I stayed in room 210 with my first roommate, which you can see in the last video. The very first video I posted going to Hampton. I stayed, which is second, it's on the second floor. There's no elevator in these dorms, so... Be aware that there's only one elevator that I know of, and that is in Moat. No, two two dorms, uh, Moton and VC Virginia Cleveland. But it's only on the older side, not on the Virginia Cleveland suites, not on that one, but on the other side. It's the same big old dorm, but there is split like that. Basically, a wall and VC suites is only one floor. There's no upstairs in the ceilings are like super high and <clears throat> yeah but it's connected in the same building but the other one is the one that has the elevator like i mentioned in the last video but they don't want you using it you get written up and all that yeah whatever so that's that i think if you lose your key it's a 75 dollar key replacement for your room or whatever but if you say at vc suites that if they happen to keep unlocking your door it's one dollar each time or whatever after about two times or once whenever they get tired so oh your most of your mail go, well i mentioned all this in the last video but uh most of your mail goes to the warehouse which is all the way in the back by moton in the boys dorm and usps goes to stone building and it also gets delivered to your dorm so if you wear fashion nova and stuff all that would be going to your dorm Curfew checks, if you fail, you get early curfew at 6 p.m. Even if you're one minute late after curfew. So if you're like 11.01 late, you still got early curfew. So you will have to be back in your dorm at 6 p.m. So be aware of that. Uh, failure will be rechecked in 24 hours. So you have 24 hours to clean your room or I guess this thing keeps going or whatever the case may be, but yeah. You have a day to clean your room and they come back and check it and you have i think it's between six and to eleven or something on tuesdays depending on your dorm so and then also bring long extension cords like i'm talking at least 10 feet or something long extension cords with a lot of plugs and outlets because 
there's only two plugs and one ethernet cord in the rooms. I don't know if there's any more that had more plug, like, you know, outlet plugs or not, but the dorm I stayed in, which was Kelsey and VC, they only had two outlets and an ethernet cord. So, bring long extension cords, not no three feet extension. I mean, that works too, but make sure you bring extension cords. It's highly recommended. Okay. Oh, no hot plates. Also, I put this in the last video, but no hot plates, no microwaves, nothing, pretty much. Don't bring nothing. If you want a refrigerator, you have to have a doctor's note. So if you have like, if you're lactose intolerant or something, just something, write down something, get it recommended from your doctor because that's the only way you're getting the refrigerator. So if you need to eat certain foods or you need constant ice, something, have that ready because uh, they won't let you have it, especially <laughs> the director in Kelsey Hall. She won't let you have it. So, all right, now I'm going to talk about my experience. And also kitchens, there is no kitchen in some of them dorms. I believe uh, it's the one right next to Kelsey that doesn't have a kitchen. So some of the dorms do not have kitchens and Kelsey Hall, their kitchen's more like a narrow hallway. And it's probably about, hmm, maybe nine feet long and probably, I want to say three feet wide. It's not very, not many people can fit in that kitchen. And there's one stove, one sink, and one big old refrigerator. And at one point we couldn't even use it because somebody left dishes in there for days or something. And so we had to take out everything if we even had stuff in the refrigerator. And we can no longer use the kitchen or the refrigerator. So if you're vegan and all that stuff, I mean the cafeteria is open some hours and I'm not sure if they upgraded on the vegan food or if they get, you know, anything in that aspect. So if you cook your food and stuff, mm -mm. You better hope they keep that kitchen clean with everybody in it. Like all the students have to keep the kitchen clean in order for you to use it, I guess. And that goes for anywhere, you know, but still, that's either you keep it clean or you don't use it at all. Oh, VC has the best cooking area because it's like a big old lounge area and they have, obviously they have one stove, one off. They have one of everything pretty much and two refrigerators, but they're the bigger ones. Kelsey Hall, has I think one big refrigerator and the rest is like mini refrigerators on each floor but all right so that's that and now my story so I'm gonna be reading through my letter as well I first made a report about my wall peeling August 19th uh, 2018 and to my I believe to the dorm director if not the RA and the RA said that at one point, she did see that the men that come in, there's usually only two men. I don't know if she's talking about them or somebody else, but they'll come in and just paint over like mold and stuff or cracks and peels, which I guess that's what you're supposed to do, but I don't really know. Anyways, I notified my RA um, about my cracks in the wall, which I'll post all the pictures and stuff about my wall right here. And she said that two men would be coming to my room the next morning or the next day. They never did to this day. So, yeah, they never came. They never showed up. So, that was out. That was canceled. Uh, next, because everyone had to evacuate due to the hurricane the following week, everyone was allowed to proceed back to school on the following date, to tw September 12th, 2018 to September 17th, 2018. Kelsey Hall began experiencing extreme mold and infestations. Extreme mold infest. It's f <laughs> extreme mold infestations. Yeah, there we go. Kelsey Hall had begun experiencing extreme mold infestations. After the hurricane, my wall had began developing green mold, wet spots within the wall, and peeling off. So it was chipping off at that. And then I had mold growing on the side of my bed. Here, that black mold was located. Okay, so yeah, refresher. 
So after we came back from the hurricane and stuff, my wall has started peeling. So I had peelings coming off my wall. It looked like there was wet spots in it from I guess the hurricane getting in the wall and stuff. It's a historic building, so maybe that happens and crap, I don't really know. But it started getting wet spots in it. I guess because the wall, it's kind of looks like drywall. You'll see the picture. And then there was green mold within it, like growing. And then also we noticed after I was coughing for a bit and my roommate called it out first, she said, hey, is that white mold in the vent? She pointed it out and clearly it was. And I put the pictures all in here, y'all. So we took the pictures and then we ended up calling like our family members and everything and like showing them like, look, they really got us in here because I noticed my roommate was coughing a lot at night and I started coughing too and I don't usually do all that. So that's when we noticed something was wrong and then we looked up in the corner of our wall, it looked like black mode is there as well. So it was like, okay, we got to deal with this as well. So we ended up, after we called our parents, my mom ended up calling the director. And the director hurried up and rushed in our room. It was like, okay, I was ordered to move me, Tanaya, immediately out of the room. It don't matter where, but out of there. So we told her about the like black mode and all that, everything that was in there. She kept responding, oh, well, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Like everybody else in this place knows what that was and it was not healthy. It was a health hazard. So, so yeah. Oh yeah. She uh, had me file a report again. So I wrote another report about everything that went on and all that crap. So, and then I also noticed that there was a white mold growing on the side of my bed, which I didn't even notice up until we started coughing and noticing how bad everything was getting. And there was like, white mold on the side of the bottom of the bed where I laid my head at court and with the wall peeling right where I laid down as well. So I was all there and it started getting worse. So at that point we moved out and then the, she offered two other rooms. There was 102, room one, 102 on the south side and 318 near the staircase upstairs. And also they both had really bad mold, but it was worse than with ours. So, well, not 102. 102 had like a weird, I don't know. There was like, there was mold, but it was in between like the desk and the bed, like the wooden part. And then in at the bottom of the, I guess closet, it was like a thick, dark gray. Either it was dust or mold. We didn't know which one, but just to be safe, we just, left it alone and went to a different room. And we also made a report in there and I did see her bring t uh, about two or three men in there to try to spray it or do whatever they was doing. So <clears throat> she showed us 318, which is upstairs. It was all dark and this, mm, I don't want to be in there either. So, and the water was, there was water dripping from the ceiling onto the right side bed, I believe. Yeah. It was dripping on the right side of the bed, so from the ceiling, it was uh, had a big old wet spot on the bed, almost like if somebody would have peed on it or something. So a big old wet spot, about that big, and the water was still dripping. Then we looked in the vent, and it's built up, like real bad built up black mold in there. Like at that point, it wasn't even white no more, so it's been sitting in there for a minute. So. That was disgusting. So we had to make that report and show her where it was at. And she was like, well, I don't know what that is. Literally the, everything that was mowed or something that wasn't right, she didn't know what it was. So, hmm. And then after we pointed that out, my director of Kelsey had notified two girls that lived in Kelsey, but they happened to get single rooms. Oh yeah, the outbreak was on September 24th where everybody, the whole second floor, she told uh, everybody to check their vents and everybody had mold. The whole second floor had white mold in the vent. September, on September 27th, 12, 13, as the process went on, there was two men that sprayed the second entire floor, only two, one not more than that. And one girl had to throw out six pairs of shoes due to mold within her closet. And that leads to my friend, my third roommate, you yeah, find her as well, but she had, I wanna say it was like patchy, dark green mold and like right behind her decoration, her wall decoration where she laid her head as well. When they peeled it off, like the whole wall was just had mold on it. Woo, ugh, yucky. 
and, and the room smelled horrible afterwards after we peeled it all off and before then none of that was there so like on moving day none of this is gonna be there y'all best believe it's not gonna be there but give it about a few weeks or a month i want to say if they ain't got it together it's gonna pop up again and that was on september 24th so everybody had to basically leave their rooms and i mean you could have stayed but like i said health hazard health hazard so September 26th, I took photos of the mold in my room, <laughs> room 210, and I made two reports at 3.45 p.m. Oh, and then the lady in this email, she tried to say that since it wasn't notified, I guess nobody else knew about it, so I had to put in check with that because the whole second floor wouldn't have had to move if there was no mold, so. That was that, so the RA texted us and said anybody that has mold in the room, the director said to go to the second floor in the stew to miss, I guess, Dean, and go speak to him. And basically everybody was in the group message saying that we'll go, and she said if you have pictures, that would be even better and show them, so. She sent the group text, so I had to make sure I sent that as well. Oh yeah, we was given basically two options, and that was uh, to move to VC with the same roommate or go to Twitchell with a different roommate. So I didn't really want to do any of that if they were gonna fit to my dorm anyway, so I didn't fill out anything. I still went to go speak to them and everything and show them the pictures and stuff, but I went about the move if they was already about to fit to, you feel me? So. I asked them if there was any other options and they said just let them know come back to them after I made a decision so I talked to my first roommate and she was so hyped so she just moved to Twitchell because she has friends from there so she already knew a lot of people in Virginia she lives there so that was her decision she wanted to go live over there so she moved there and I just stayed okay so that was the two options but I'm gonna backtrack because I did say my director asked the two girls that had the single room, she asked them if it was okay if uh, we have a discussion to see if me and my roommate could split the room or somebody live in whichever one. So we ended up going, I stayed in room, I believe it was like 312. Yeah, uh, my second room was a uh, room 312. Moving in once again. As of Thursday, September 27th at 12.57, I just finished moving to 3.12. And they weren't too happy that they had to split the room, but of course we didn't really have a choice. Our room was like invested with mold, so we needed somewhere to stay. So they agreed to it, but the problem was the girl next door that my first room was gonna stay with, she had everything all her stuff because her parents ended up moving so she literally had to bring all her clothes and everything so she was worried about where she was gonna put her clothes and all that stuff so understandable why she would be upset so and then my roommate my second roommate she was used to having a room by herself so but she was okay with sharing and stuff and yeah that was that but she I say for her, she kept asking a lot of questions trying to get to know me, but you're not gonna get to know me in one one day, you know? But she's really cool, don't get me wrong, but that was just frustrating after moving my entire dorm by myself for the most part, but like, that, it's a lot going through one night and then you have somebody asking you questions 24 seven about you and your roommate. I'm, there's no way I'm gonna answer all that in one day and all that stuff and you're not gonna figure me out just by me, at, you know, asking questions and stuff. Like, you just live and go with it. But I don't think I was gonna stay in there for a long time anyway, so yeah. I just was getting annoyed with that part. But yeah, so I moved in there and there was, to start off, once I moved, there was, my roommate's friend was in there. And really, no, there was two girls in there. Yeah, two girls, so there was three total and four counting me. And I was moving all my stuff still. And one of the girls, she's asking what my name is, who I am, and all that good stuff. And she asked me if I had a hair dryer, and I said, yeah, and I'll let you, I'll let you use it. Like, I just think she's gonna let, use it in my room and all that stuff, but, so I said, after I'm done moving, yeah, you can use it, or whatever. I remember texting my GA about, like, how rough, I guess, the night was, and that I was ready to go to sleep, but 
I didn't go, so I was still in the room at curfew or whatever, but I ended up leaving afterwards to go in like the study room because my roommate's friends were still in there and they was talking loud, laughing and all that stuff. I was ready to lay down. I was already frustrated about the night, so I remember texting her and then they were still in my room after curfew, so I didn't go back into my dorm until around two in the morning and finally go to sleep. My roommate's friend, <laughs> came back into the room and she asked if she could sleep in there. So the first night, my roommate and her friends slept together in the same bed. Like, it's like, okay, okay, mind my business, mind my business. So that was that. And then the next day, I came back to my room and showed my friend from downstairs, the one that had the room 312 with the mold behind her decorations. I came back upstairs and showed her my room because everything, you know, all that I had to, you know, put in there by myself. So I showed her all that, that I was moving and I was telling her what happened. And I noticed my hair dryer was not where it was. Cause I told her about the girl that was gonna use it or whatever. She didn't really know me either. So I went into each of the rooms asking who, who is she? Cause I didn't know the woman or not, not woman. Maybe, I guess, but I didn't know the girl, so I was asking, do they know what she looks like or who she is, and they luckily knew it, and they pointed me to her room. So I went to her room and asked if she had my hair dryer, and she said, yes, yeah, right here, when it shouldn't have been in her room at all. It should have been in my room where I left it. So I had to get my hair dryer back, and I put it back in my room. So I almost got <laughs> my stuff stolen the first time, staying upstairs. It's a different atmosphere up there than the second floor of Kelsey. Like the third floor was loud, it was loud. <laughs> okay, and then the third straw of, of the living in my second room was I came back with my friend, the same girl with the decorations, all that stuff. I came back with her to open my door, but my door was already open and my roommate was not in the room. There was two other chicks, two or three other chicks in there. My roommate's friend had stayed at night and slept in the same bed with her. She was in there with two other girls. One was at my roommate's desk and the other girl was with the friend on the bed. Like, But my stuff, I don't like that because my stuff was all out still. And I almost got my hair dry stolen the first time. So I was like, okay, I don't like this. So I'm ready to move out. So it was already, it was only what two or three days that I stayed and I was already ready to move again because that's dangerous and the wall started peeling again on my side so I asked my roommate if uh, me and her well me and the, her friend can move because her friend that stayed the night was living in the dorm next door to her like the room next door so I asked her she said yeah because they already want to stay together anyway like because they're best friends, so I was like, okay, that works if y'all just room up, be roommates. So me and the girl from uh, 210 or 213, one of those, 212, was uh, the one that had the decorations, or whatever, the mode behind the decorations. She needed a room to stay in, so I said, okay, she can be my roommate. So she's my third roommate. And me and her just moved to room 310, which is next door to 312, so. We just moved into there, and <laughs> I know it's a lot of moving, y'all. It's a lot going on. So, and once again, I had to move all my stuff, but this time I had a little bit of more help. So, me and my third roommate moved into 310, and in the rooms are smaller, so none of the rooms are really the same size. So, be aware of that you may get a really small, small, small room or a gigantic room. There's not really an in between. There's like I don't know, it's either real narrow or long or wider. This depends on which room you get, so that's something. So later I started having troubles with my third roommate as she was touching my belongings, like my desk, my clock, shoes being played, it's on my shower stuff in my closet and uh, my desk. So the first issue was uh, Sunday, September 30th at 10.30. I was on the phone with my boyfriend and my best friend while doing homework and doing my homework and stuff with them, but I was also talking on FaceTime and on the phone regular. And 
they came in it was like quiet in there other than me talking and stuff but it was quiet for the most part so my third roommate and her friend comes in her friends all loud and on the phone as well and she came and sat down at my friends at my third roommate's desk and then my roommate comes in with another girl and she was like ah. it was when insecure the last the season finale of insecure was coming on that's when it was and she was like huh, all upset and pouting like that and i was like what's wrong or whatever and she was like the, um something's not working with the tv or whatever because the cable wasn't working and she wanted to watch a show as soon as it came on and all that stuff and i was like you've heard this bootleg or something like watch it online something else like it's not the end of the world and she just got upset so i remember she was playing with the tv or something she's trying to get it on and keep in mind when we first moved in me and her uh we figured out that only i can get to the ethernet cord and twirl it in because it's under my bed like on the side so if she needs the tv on or something i have to plug that in and coil it in and stuff because like i said it's on my side there's no way to get to it even if you move the desk can't get to it i have to reach down there and do it so with that being said after about i want to say 15 minutes or whatever why did this girl move my desk like a daggone gorilla like jerking it like this so i have stuff falling off my desk and luckily the printer and everything else did not fall i had a vanity light the printer my work stuff like all my homework and it's everything i have my hairspray bottle and my kool-aid um what is it the kool-aid container like you put the powder in there and like yeah i had that on there and that fell off the desk like repeatedly every time she's pulling and jerking the daggone the daggone desk every time she's jerking on it it's falling off so she broke my hairspray bottle i never got an apology to this day for her breaking my stuff but the next day she went and bought her own hairspray bottle so anyways that was that and so she was pushing my desk and she was trying to get to the thing so i'm yelling her name like three times what is wrong with you what do you need what's wrong why are you pushing my desk what are you doing and i kept saying that she didn't answer me and i said i said if you're trying to get to the ethernet cord you need to ask me because i'm the only one to get, get to it we both knew this so i plugged it in for her and then she pushed my desk the same way she jerked it back she pushed it again just like that and again hairspray bottle and my kool-aid's fall off the desk she keeps having to put it back up there and push back shouldn't even be touching my stuff in the first place don't do that don't do that so that was that of strike one and she finally watched the show and she was laughing all loud and at that point i was i was upset like i was heated i was still trying to get my work done at the same time so that was that oh yeah i was angry you can see all the text messages and bleeps mm -hmm. i was upset so upset second issue was oh yeah i was on the phone with my boyfriend at night i believe and it was after curfew because I, I think she noticed i was upset after that day so she missed curfew and she was in like in my, one of her friend's rooms yeah she was in one of her friend's rooms at the time so she noticed I was upset after that because she never really missed a scarf you. So I'm guessing that was it. I don't know. Anyways, I was on the phone with my boyfriend trying to help him through like a tough situation. And I was reading him some Bible scriptures, some good ones that he can read because he was asking me what should he turn to and all that. So I was on the phone with him about that. And she came in. She was like, uh, can I turn off the light? I said, no, not yet because... I'm using it. I said, I'll turn it off once I'm finished, so, so don't worry about it. And so she went to her desk and sat down on her bed, or not her desk. She went to her bed and sat down. And she got on the phone, sitting like this, on her phone, and texting. And then 10 minutes go by. She going to look at me again. And I'm, I have headphones on, right? So I'm, turn, I'm turning this way on the phone towards the wall on my bedside. She's over here. I got beats on, so I mean, they weren't that loud because, like I said, I'm on the phone, but they were loud enough that you can see that I'm engaged in the conversation. So she looked at me, she said, Do you need a flashlight? And I guess my boyfriend heard her through the headphones, and I was, like I said, I was on the phone and I was reading scriptures and stuff. So she said, Do you need a flashlight? And 
I apparently, my boyfriend said, did you hear? I said, no, I wasn't, I'm, I'm talking. You see, I'm clearly engaged, so I'm not gonna answer. So she went and dug through her, uh, well, what, she dug through her closet at the bottom, and she looked for a little flashlight. She gonna walk up to me and tap on me. So I moved my headphone off and I look at her, and she was like, do you need a flashlight? She said, here's a flashlight. I said, no, thank you though. Um, I didn't ask for that. I said, I'll get the light when I'm done. So I told her, no, I don't need it. And then, which that was also very rude. You just don't do that. Like I get it. It's probably late and everything, but like that, that was rude. It was unnecessary. So she got the flashlight and put it back or whatever. And then at this point, she goes and stand by the light. I'm like okay okay so I told oh yeah and so I was talking to my boyfriend and I was telling him about scriptures I was sending him pictures of it everything she's standing by the light like this this is why she's irritated I was like okay so that point 15 minutes go by I'm still reading my bible and stuff and I said okay now you can get the light and then then she turned it off and went to bed so and then third issue Monday, October 8th at 3.19 p.m. I came back to my room and I noticed that my clock was bent and I sent the pictures to my parents. I, said, I also sent it to her. I said, uh, did you break my clock? And she said, no, uh, it's probably when I opened the lines. I don't even sound right. I, I, so I, I tested her little theory, whatever she did. So, so I left my clock where it was and I went ahead and opened the blinds like I turned it everything and keep in mind all she had to do was move my clock on the bed there's not that much space that you had to do all that so i opened it and nothing happened moved the bed and moved the clock onto my bed and opened it and did whatever still didn't mess it up so how did you manage to bend my clock like that so i was like okay never got an answer for that other than it could have been from her opening the blinds Fourth issue, I had my, my pink Timberlands in front of my closet and it was on my side and there's not like a lot of room for your closets by the way, you're not gonna get like no big walk-in. So your closets are small, so don't bring a whole bunch of clothes. Keep that in mind. So I, I came back, I was on the phone with my boyfriend, I went into the bathroom for a minute, came back and my shoes was not there no more. And I looked, I was like, where? I know I had my shoes right there, I quit fronting. So I looked and she was there too. She was on her side of the room, like by her closet. So let store to my closet. And there's like, like I said, her rug overlaps onto my side just a little bit. And my shoes weren't even on there. So I look and I open my closet. My shoes are, my Timberlands are on top of my shower stuff. <sighs> Y'all, I was so frustrated. I was upset at that point. I said, uh-uh. I said, no, this is what we're not gonna do. We don't do that. So, cause you don't go into people's stuff. You don't touch your roommate's stuff. You don't do none of that. Don't, don't do that. So that was the fourth issue and I put the picture right there. You had no reason to touch my stuff. You had no reason at all. So don't, that's an issue, that's an issue. So at that point, I went and talked to the Dean's uh, residence life. Um, so I was waiting for their call back. So I already spoke to them. And it was a dude this time, so he read my report and he signed off and he said, all right, since it's exam day and stuff, like there's gonna be exams, I give you a few more days to like move out and stuff and get your stuff together. So I ended up telling my RA and my GA, everybody letting them know I'm moving and I'll be leaving the dorm. So I moved again and I went, this time I went to Virginia, Cleveland. So, and uh, he said that Ms. Mr. H will be expecting me. So she'd be looking for me. So I ended up going over there and I moved into room B2. All right, you guys, this is my fourth time moving. Oops, forgot. All right, it's a mess, but it's a whole lot bigger. That's the hallway. Yay, I got three windows. Ignore my messy side. I'm gonna get it together. I just moved in yesterday. So October 18, 2008 at 11 a.m. I officially moved four times and I now lived in Virginia Cleveland Hall and B02, the second floor. So 
and that was that. And then I was supposed to have a roommate on October 25th because uh, Miss H kept blowing up my phone even while I was in class and saying you need to have your stuff together, don't have stuff on the other side of the room. I only had, what was it, a little picture frame or something on that side, like something that you hang up on your wall. A, a decoration, I only had that over there because I, I wasn't done like getting my stuff together on my side of the room. And that roommate never showed. So I didn't get my other roommate until November 15, 2018 at 12.05. Anyways, there were several roaches that I had to kill and I reported. I've seen over 10 roaches in B Hall alone. Over 10, easy. And also, if the roaches were not in my room, they were in the hallway or in the bathroom. And they had roaches in the toilet. And then what else was there? Oh, on the stairway and in the lobby. And then they had the centipedes and spiders are everywhere. So, but they had spiders too. So yeah, the roaches freaking everywhere, y'all.